Hello, I'm Marissa, Chief Entomologist at the Butterfly Biosphere here at Thanksgiving Point. Take a look around you. How many different types of butterflies do you see? There's around 30 or 40 different species in here at any given moment. These butterflies weren't born here. They actually come from eight countries around the world uh, from small family farms that raise them. Uh, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about that caterpillar farming process and talk about how important that is. Many butterfly farmers start out in large monocrop farming businesses, which can be very destructive to the natural ecosystem. Often, those farmers became ill from overuse of pesticides, and they realized that they needed a change of work for their health, and that they wanted to give back to the environment instead of taking away from it. So a lot of them turned to butterfly farming. Each farmer has their own system of raising caterpillars, but many elements are the same. They grow massive amounts of native host plant and allow their adult butterflies to lay eggs on them. They collect eggs or very small caterpillars and take them to a lab to be closely monitored as the caterpillars grow. When they reach the chrysalis stage, they are carefully counted and sent to our distributors. They arrive on passenger planes, undergo careful inspection as they arrive in the United States, and finally make their way to us at the Butterfly Biosphere. Farming butterflies requires the planting of native host plants and flowers, allowing networks of families to generate incomes without causing ecological damage. As farmers grow their business and buy up more land, they are creating natural habitats free of pesticides. Some of our suppliers even use their profits simply to buy up and protect rainforest land. In Costa Rica, where about 80% of the butterflies at the butterfly biosphere are sourced, the government highly regulates its natural resources. Butterfly farmers are permitted to collect only two butterflies from the wild every six months, one male, one female. This has resulted in completely safe and stable natural populations, even after 35 years of farming. Unfortunately, the closures of museums and zoos around the world due to COVID-19 mean that many of those facilities no longer have the revenue to continue to purchase butterflies, and global travel restrictions prevent the ability to ship even to those that can. Personal connections with animals at insectariums, museums, zoos, aviaries, and aquariums help the public learn about science concepts, get inspired to support conservation causes, and spend time strengthening bonds as friends and family. While so many are struggling right now, we ask that you consider donating to your local zoo or museum if it's within your means to help them continue caring for their animals while the world is on pause. Or support them with your attendance when we can be together again. So the next time you visit us at the Butterfly Biosphere, know that as you're enjoying these beautiful creatures, their presence here is having a butterfly effect on their homelands halfway around the world. If you like the video, like it, don't forget to subscribe and leave any questions or comments below. Thanks.